In a few moments during our mission vision time, we're going to remember and celebrate together the life of Anna Eckroat, who passed away recently. She was the oldest member of our congregation, 105 years old. And I'm going to share a song that was one of her favorites, a song called One Day at a Time. I, I did the math. I added up the days for 105 years. Anna was alive for 38,000 days. Over 38,000 days. To give you some frame of reference, as I stand here today, I've, I've had a little over 15,000. And 15,000, there are days when 15,000 feels pretty old. You know what I mean? She was alive over 38,000 days. And from what I observed in her life, um, this song uh, was not just a favorite song of hers. This is how she lived. This was, I'm sure, a prayer of hers that, that God would help her to take each day as it comes and have just enough strength to get through that day. Um, that's a healthy perspective, a healthy way to live. It's a biblical perspective. We see the essence of that song in the Lord's Prayer when he said, Give us this day our daily bread. Just enough for today. Just enough for one day. And the psalmist writes, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Can't, can't live in the past. Tomorrow is not a guarantee. It may never come. You know? We need to take the day that God has given us right here, right now. Do the best we can to live for Him today. Probably, odds are, not many of us will see 38,000 days in our lifetime. But whatever time God gives us, I pray uh, and encourage you, take them as they come to us one day at a time. I'm only human. I'm just a man. Lord, help me to be what I should be and all that I am. Show me the stairway that I have to climb. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Jesus, well, that's all I'm asking from you, that you give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So for today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember when you walked among Lord Jesus, you know, cause you're looking below, it's much worse now than then, so much pushing and shoving, Lord, it's crowding my mind, so for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time, just one day at a time sweet Jesus oh that's all I'm asking from you that you'd give me the strength to do every day what I have to do yesterday's gone sweet Jesus and tomorrow may never be mine So for today, show me the way One day at a time Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus And tomorrow may never be mine So for 
Lord, today, show me the way, one day at a time, one day at a time. Ever get a song stuck in your head? You can't had a Beatles song stuck in my head yesterday. <laughs> Over at my son Scott's painting the outside of his house and song, and I started singing it. And after a while, I said, "Scott, I can't get that song out of my head." So he gets out this thing. Who's that gal? Alexi, Alexa, something like that. He's, so he says, "Alexa, play the Beatles." So. Now I've got a whole bunch of Beatles songs stuck in my head. But there's a song that would be good to stick in your head, wouldn't it? One day at a time, Jesus. Anne Eckrod, born July 26, 1912, passed away August 18th, 2017. Passed away from earth, but she's in heaven. I needed the quiet, so he drew me aside into the shadows where we could confide, away from the bustle where all the day long I hurried and worried when active and strong. I needed the quiet, though. At first I rebelled, but gently, so gently, my cross he upheld. And whispered so sweetly of spiritual things, though weakened in body, my spirit took wings to heights never heard of when active and gay. He loved me so greatly. He drew me away. I needed the quiet. No prison my bed, but a beautiful valley of blessings instead, a place to grow richer and Jesus to hide. I needed the quiet, so he drew me aside. Alice Mortensen, one of Anna's favorite poems. There's so much that could be said about someone who lived on our planet 105 years. Indeed, when Anna turned 100 years old, her daughter Jerry introduced her on one occasion as, quote, this is my mother. She was born the year the Titanic went down. To which Anna quickly replied, but it wasn't my fault. (laughs) She was married to a coal miner for 50 years, and I believe that some of her toughness, and she was tough, some of her toughness came from life in the coal mountains of Pennsylvania. I passed her there 13 years. Those folks have to be tough. That's tough life there, mining coal. So in over a century of life on earth, Anna lived through the transition from the horse and the buggy to the automobile. She lived through two world wars and the Great Depression. She was alive before Arizona became a state. She experienced the arrival of television, space travel, computers, and cell phones. Indeed, she saw the telephone change from something you cranked to something you dialed to something you pushed buttons on to something you could command by your voice. She also experienced... Refrigeration change from an ice box to a refrigerator to a frost-free refrigerator. I shared that in the early service, and all of a sudden it occurred to me that so have I. <laughs> and so it went throughout her lifetime. In, in one of the most rapidly changing centuries of human history, Anna witnessed a lot of change, and not all of it was good. Among her talents were things like sewing. She could sew dresses. She indeed used to outfit all of her daughters when they were young. She would write poetry. I have some of her poems. I just couldn't find them. I looked and looked. I I got them somewhere. Good poetry. She loved gardening, and she liked playing the piano. I didn't know that about her, that she played the piano. In fact, I'm told she would often play and gather her four daughters together as they sang four-part harmony in the living room. I wish I could have been there for that. One, One of my fairly recent pastoral honors was to baptize Anna when she was in her 90s. Oldest person I ever baptized. I laugh, laughed when she said to me with that tricky smile of hers, Pastor, don't you think it's about time? She, she had that humor about her, didn't she? When her, when her grandson Richard um, announced to her that he was going to his high school class reunion, she said, well, I would go to mine, but I'd be the only one there. <laughs> she would say, don't, don't buy me any green bananas. I might not be around when they ripen. <laughs> she could laugh about some of the things in life that some people just become very depressed about. I got this note from her a while back. 
It, uh, a few years ago now, I guess, she, she wrote, said, pa- Pastor Bieber, I enjoyed your Sunday sermon. It hit home. Even the people in the pew in front of me, when you said everyone wants to be the boss, the two ladies pointed to each other and laughed. Maybe their problem was solved. And on the second page, she says, Pastor, your sermon on Sunday was outstanding and to the point. Thank you. And then she cut out of a newspaper or a magazine. It looks like it, the kind of thing you would remember, Parade magazine that came in the Sunday newspaper years ago. It looks like it would have been something that came out of that. It's, it says, you can't see it too far away, but in big, bold letters, it says, leave it to Bieber. <laughs> and at the bottom, she wrote, she wrote a little humor. She, she had the ability to laugh and bring laughter out. She enjoyed creation. There were always flowers and bird feeders around her house. And there, there's a quote that she took from a card Patsy and I had sent her that she kept in a prominent place. Here, here's the quote. The next time the sunrise steals your breath away or a meadowland of flowers leaves you speechless, remain that way. Say nothing and listen as heaven whispers. Do you like it? I did it all for you. She liked poetry. She liked humor. She liked music. She liked creation. She liked the spirit of the game. Just ask anyone who ever played pinochle with her. She took it seriously. Those are some of the things she liked. But what she loved was her Savior and her family. Even when it was beginning to become more uh, difficult for her to physically get around, I knew that on the first Sunday of the month, she'd be in the sanctuary. She would be right here to share at the table of the Lord with God's people. She didn't like to miss communion, and she loved her Lord. Anytime I asked Anne about her daughters or her grandchildren, the lights came on her soul. She just, she just lit up, so happy to talk about them, so happy to reference them. And back a year or so ago when Barbara had a really, really difficult time in her, in her journey fighting cancer, and we, we weren't sure she was going to make it through that bout. Some of you may remember she was in the hospital and in, and in a grave situation. Um, um, afterwards, uh, after she got back home, I, I wrote a note to, to Anna to, just to encourage her. And she, she wrote back a, a little bit later saying, and I'll just read some, some of the phrases from it. A few weeks ago, I received a note from you concerning my children. I appreciate that. I've had Barbara for over 70 years. She was a good child, and now she is a very good friend of mine. Parents, let me just add something to that. As I I meet a lot of parents out there in the world who who are not disciplining their children. And when I when I speak to them about that, they say, Well, I'm afraid if I if I do that, then then my my child won't be my friend, and I want my child to be my friend. Anna could be tough as a mom. You ask her daughter, she could be tough. But she loved them and they knew that. And they grew up to be her friend. Parents, we're not called to be friends of our children when they're young. We're called to be their parents. There's a difference. And if you'll be their loving parent and you'll discipline them and love them, they will grow up to be your friend. Otherwise, they may grow up to resent you. Just a footnote. Just something Anna reminded me of. She wrote a little bit later, I have been so fortunate to have four daughters Thank you, God. I am so fortunate. She loved her family. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the example that Anna was to so many of us. What a joy to know her, to to be called her friend, to walk with her through some dark valleys of shadows, not just her own, but those in the lives of her children. Lord, I, I, remember, I remember on one occasion in visiting with Anna and asking her how she was doing. Very concerned because at that point her, her, her bones were starting to give her difficulty. She has great pain in her back. And Lord, I remember her answer was, Pastor, right now I'm doing better than my daughters. Can you pray for my daughters? They're all hurting. I thank you for a mom who loved and cared. I pray, Lord, that that you would bless Anna's daughters today and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. Bless them, Lord, and keep them. And thank you, Lord, for the legacy she's left. We pray it in your holy name.
Amen. Church, I invite you to stand as we sing together now a song of consecration. Another one of Anna's favorites. It is well with my soul. A song of consecration.